everybody. This is Ed, the Audio Nut, also radio amateur operator W8EDW. I built this to-go box for my ICOM 7300. It's battery operated, very portable. The only problem was uh, I didn't have an antenna to go with it. Uh, I wanted to be able to take it out in the field. And uh, I remembered I had this screwdriver style antenna that I used years ago. It's been in storage, so I decided to break it out and put together a project. I think you guys will enjoy it. It's how to mount it, and then I came up with a unique idea for the radials. Stand by. This is the screwdriver antenna. I'm planning on mounting it on a uh, speaker stand. Um, and you'll notice at the one end of the uh, antenna, there's a bolt. It's a 3 8 inch bolt. And uh, that's what you use to mount it. And so I thought, well, uh, probably a speaker mount uh, would work. And I looked on Amazon and I found a speaker mount that really is going to work out well. Very inexpensive. And uh, so I'll show you what that looks like. Here's the speaker mount that I found on Amazon. Actually, you get a pair of them for about 20 bucks. Um, it's made out of aluminum. It's uh, well made, really. And uh, I think it's going to work out perfect to um, mount our antenna to it. Um, what I'm planning on doing is drilling a hole in the center here that that bolt on the bottom of the screwdriver antenna is going to come through and then it'll fasten this to the to the base of the antenna. And then, of course, this part here will slip over the, the speaker stand. Uh, I'll try to put the model number up here so you guys can see it. Uh, this is the box that came in. I'll bring it up here slowly. Hopefully, you can see that. The model number is from Soundtown. But uh, really good quality. I'm amazed at, you know, what the quality is like. But anyway... I'll uh, get busy on drilling some holes in this thing, and uh, we'll go from there. Here's the mount after I drilled the 3 8 inch hole. And then I drilled two more holes, an uh, eighth inch here and an eighth inch here. And uh, the reason I did that is I'm going to be mounting an un-un onto the uh, plate right there. And uh, the one I'm using is this one right here. I'll bring it up slowly. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, it's an RU 4 to 1 on, on. It's by LDG. It's uh, not too expensive, but at the one end you can see it's got the uh, hot and the ground um, output. And then on the other end, of course, that's where my coax is going to go. And this is going to mount uh, right there where I was uh, drilling those small holes. It just lines up with that, and uh, I was using like an eighth inch uh, bolt to come through those holes to mount this thing. So uh, more about that a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and get this mounted onto the antenna and uh, start putting everything together. Here's the speaker mount after I mounted it to the base of the antenna. Uh, you'll be able to see the bolt down in there. That goes through and attaches to the base of the antenna. So that worked out really nice. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit and uh, start mounting some other things on here. I've got the uh, Balin mounted on there. It turned out pretty good. It's uh, got plenty of room and uh, doesn't get in the way of anything. And you can see that it's uh, came out pretty good. So the next thing uh, that we need to do is connect the ballon to the antenna and um, we have to take the hot side which is this one and put it to this screw over here and then the uh, ground side to the screw here which is on the ground side of the antenna so uh, I'm going to work on getting some jumpers together for that and be right back so there's the uh, jumpers from the ballon uh, I just used some crimp-on ends, 14-gauge uh, wire. This one's red, and then this one's got some black on it. So uh, I know that's the ground. And uh, 
So the next thing up is mounting the electric wire that's going to control the the motor, the up down on the motor. And uh, I'll just mount this on here and I'll show you how I do it. I use the Anderson power poles on the end of the uh, cable and then uh, I brought it around and I just used the existing holes and used some small zip ties to zip tie it right here and then also I zip tied through the hole back here uh, for the cable the strain relief. So it just wraps around and goes into the uh, into the motor section there. So that's all there is to that. And uh, next is going to be mounting the box for the radials. And that's going to be interesting. You'll like this. Next, I'm going to mount the electrical box. We're going to use this for our radials. And uh, you'll see how that works out. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, I'm going to mount that on there and I'll show you how it goes on and where it goes. I've got the ground radial box mounted. I used a bolt here. There was a slot right here and I ran the bolt through there and then there was an existing hole in this box that lined up and I put a nut on the other side to hold it in place. Just tightened it up. It's ready to go. Uh, there's one more thing I have to do to this box before we can start adding the system that I'm going to use for the radials. So I'll do that now. I added a grounding strap that I made that runs from the grounding side of the uh, antenna over to our box, which the box is going to be grounded and used for the radial system. So I wanted to make sure it got a really good ground. Uh, so I just fastened it in the same ground connection as this uh, connection here. It's going to the uh, ballon. So that's going to work out good. And uh, now I'm going to show you the cool system that I came up with for the ground radial system. Stand by. So as far as the ground radial system for the antenna, I was thinking, what can I use for ground radials? And uh, what can be easily plugged in and unplugged? And I came up with this idea. Believe it or not, this is going to be my ground radial system. And what I did was I took the outlets and I grounded them to each other. I put the hot to the to the neutral. I took the actual ground pin and grounded it to everything. So basically everything's grounded to everything else. And then I took these straps that I made and these are going to ground to the box. So what's cool about this, it's going to allow me to just plug in a standard extension cord, which I have a lot of those. I have a 50 footer, I have a 25, I have 100 footers. And um, the other unique thing about it is it's going to allow me to change the length of my ground radials just by plugging them into each other. So I can do some experimentation on that. The other nice thing is that um, my extension cords are yellow and uh, they're easy to see. So um, people aren't going to be tripping on them. And uh, in each cord, you've got three wires. You've got the actual ground pin wire, you've got the hot, and then you've got the neutral. And uh, so you've got plenty of wire going out for each radial. So um, anyway, I'm going to put this into the box. And uh, I think it's going to work out pretty cool. We'll see. And um, it's worth the time to try it. So anyway, there's the complete system. I think it turned out pretty good. Everything seemed to mount on there uh, very easily. And uh, can't wait to try it out. That's going to be another video. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, please give me a thumbs up. And please subscribe. We'll catch you next time. Thanks.